Thank you all for joining me today. It's a pleasure to speak at the 41st Annual Congress of the Korean Society of Critical Care Medicine, together in partnership with the Japanese Society of Intensive Care Medicine. I'm grateful to the organizing committee for the invitation to speak about the role of vitamin C in treating sepsis. I'm Greg Martin, a professor of pulmonary and critical care medicine at Emory University and president for the Society of Critical Care Medicine. I have spent my career conducting research for sepsis and ARDS, and now COVID-19, and a notable conflict for this lecture is my role on the Victus trial, studying vitamin C and funded by the Marcus Foundation. Over the next 30 minutes, we're going to talk about the different aspects of vitamin C and where it may fit in treating sepsis, starting with the rationale and biological roles for vitamin C with thymine and hydrocortisone for treating sepsis. And secondly, exploring the background knowledge of vitamin C deficiency in critical illness. And finally, discussing the current clinical evidence for using these drugs to treat sepsis. A case series from a single hospital receives substantial interest from both the media and from ICU clinicians because it reported the experience of physicians who felt that several patients who were gravely ill unexpectedly survived after receiving vitamin C, thiamine, and corticosteroids together. This paper reported that consecutive patients who received these three drugs had much lower mortality than matched patients seen previously at the center. The absolute risk reduction in mortality was 32%, falling from 40% to 8% when compared with matched historical controlled patients. Let's start with the rationale for what we call triple therapy in sepsis, meaning the biological rationale for the use of vitamin C, thiamine, and corticosteroids together in treating patients with sepsis. One of the things that we know is that plasma vitamin C levels are very low in critically ill patients with sepsis. And in fact, subnormal levels are universally present in these patients. Now, we also have seen that ascorbate levels, meaning levels of vitamin C, cor correlate inversely with the incidence of multiple organ dysfunction and with mortality, meaning that lower levels of ascorbate levels go along with higher numbers of failed organs and higher mortality. Each of the three drugs has a potential role in treating patients with sepsis. Thiamine is an essential vitamin for aerobic metabolism and thiamine deficiency may cause lactic acidosis. Ascorbic acid is similarly important for aerobic metabolism and is also a potent antioxidant and a cofactor in the production of endogenous vasoconstrictors, while corticosteroids have broad anti-inflammatory effects. One of the first clinical studies to inform the use of vitamin C in sepsis patients was a phase one study conducted in Virginia of 24 critically ill sepsis patients with organ dysfunction who were treated either with a lower dose or a higher dose of vitamin C or instead with a placebo. And what Barry Fowler and his team saw was that vitamin C treated patients had higher levels of plasma ascorbate and a reduction in organ dysfunction that was dose dependent. That same group followed up the earlier sepsis study with a similar study now in patients with sepsis-induced ARDS, known as the Citrus ALI study. And in this study, 167 patients with acute lung injury or ARDS were randomized to the higher dose of vitamin C, 200 milligrams per kilogram per day, used for four days or to be treated with a matching placebo. And what they saw was a reduction in 28-day mortality a reduction from 46% to 30% that was statistically significant. There was no overall difference in SOFA score, but when accounting for the differences in mortality, there appeared to be a lower SOFA at 96 hours in the patients who were receiving the vitamin C. There also was slight or at least modest suggestion that there may have been more rapid ARDS recovery with more ventilator-free days and also ICU recovery with more ICU-free days. However, of all the other biological and physiological parameters, nothing else was significant between the two groups. And one of the things that we learned from that study was that the administration of high doses of vitamin C 
can lead to inaccurate and misleading measurements of point of care glucose to the point that the point of care measurements will be higher than the actual glucose when it's measured in a clinical laboratory. And this can be a problem because it can cause you to miss hypoglycemia because the point of care measurement may appear normal when the actual result is low, or it can actually cause hypoglycemia because we think the glucose is high and we give insulin even though the glucose level was not as high as it, we thought it was. Knowing that there's several potential benefits as well as potential adverse effects from using high dose vitamin C in critically ill sepsis patients lends itself to a systematic review to better understand the clinical evidence. However, many of the clinical studies have a lot of heterogeneity in them, which makes it difficult to synthesize them together into a point estimate in a systematic review. For instance, in this review, the studies did not necessarily require randomization or even having a control group, but this did suggest that maybe there was benefit to vitamin C associated with a shorter time on mechanical ventilation, and that benefit appeared to be most present in the more severely ill patients with the longest mechanical ventilation. However, the results of this systematic review are limited by the heterogeneity of the trials that had been conducted with vitamin C. Looking at the clinical evidence for the use of vitamin C and thiamine in treating patients with sepsis, one of the first studies was this one out of South Korea that looked retrospectively at the use of vitamin C and thiamine together in 229 septic shock patients. And what they saw was overall no difference in mortality, except perhaps in the subgroups of the patients who had a low albumin or who were more severely ill with a higher SOFA score. This study from South Korea compared the use of vitamin C, thiamine, and hydrocortisone together in treating severe pneumonia. In this retrospective series of 53 patients, those who were treated with vitamin C at a dose of 1.5 grams every six hours, along with thiamine, 200 milligrams every 12 hours, and hydrocortisone, 50 milligrams every six hours, was compared to 46 matched severe pneumonia patients who did not receive those drugs. And in the propensity matched analysis, what they found was an association between the receipt of those medications and a lower mortality and an improvement in radiologic score. The retrospective uncontrolled and single center studies of the use of vitamin C, thiamine, and hydrocortisone in sepsis led to a series of randomized prospective trials looking at those three drugs to improve clinical outcomes. One of the first of those was the Hyvictus trial published last year in 2020, looking at 80 patients with sepsis or septic shock who were randomized to a similar drug regimen of vitamin C, thiamine, and hydrocortisone at those same doses. And what they found in this study was no difference in overall mortality. But in fact, there may have been some reduction in mortality of the patients who were most rapidly treated and admitted within the ICU within the first 48 hours. They also did see a reduction in SOFA score, a greater reduction in the patients who received the treatment compared to those patients who received placebo. The next study was the ATES study, which was 111 septic shock patients, again randomized to a similar regimen of high dose vitamin C with thiamine and hydrocortisone. In this study, there was no difference in SOFA score, no difference in shock reversal, acute kidney injury, or ventilator-free days, and no difference in mortality. The next study is the ORANGES study of 137 critically ill sepsis and septic shock patients who were randomized to that same regimen of vitamin C, thiamine, and hydrocortisone. And in this study, they saw a significant reduction in the duration of shock about half as long a time on vasopressors for the patients who received the three drug combination compared to patients who received the placebo. There was no difference in organ dysfunction or SOFA score and no difference in overall mortality in this trial. The vitamin study was a large study of 211 septic shock patients who were randomized to that same regimen of the three drug combination. And in this study, they saw no difference in mortality 
No difference in the duration of shock or the need for vasopressors, but they did see a reduction in SOFA score that favored the patients in the treatment group with a greater reduction in organ dysfunction at 72 hours compared to patients in the control group. The ACTS study studied ascorbic acid, corticosteroids, and thymine in 205 patients with septic shock using a similar regimen of vitamin C, thymine, and hydrocortisone. And in this study, finding no difference in SOFA score, no difference in other measures of organ dysfunction, no difference in mortality, but some differences between groups with greater hyperglycemia and greater hypernatremia in the treated patients. And the final study I'll talk about is the VICTA study, the vitamin C, thymine, and steroids in sepsis trial. This was a prospective multi-center, double-blind, randomized trial of patients who had sepsis with either respiratory or cardiovascular compromise or both. And the patients were randomly assigned to either that three drug combination at the same doses of vitamin C 1.5 grams every six hours, thymine 100 milligrams every six hours, or hydrocortisone 50 milligrams every six hours, or matching placebos for the period of four days. In the Victus trial, stress dose steroids were allowed at the discretion of the treating clinical team, particularly for patients with shock. And the primary outcome for the trial was consecutive days free of ventilator and vasopressor support, or VVFD, in the 30 days following randomization. In the Victus trial, the inclusion criteria identified patients with confirmed or suspected infection undergoing ICU admission for either respiratory or cardiovascular dysfunction. Respiratory dysfunction manifests as either the need for positive pressure ventilation, invasively or non-invasively, or the use of high flow nasal cannula. And cardiovascular dysfunction identified as patients who required intravenous vasopressors to maintain a mean arterial pressure of at least 65 millimeters of mercury despite fluid resuscitation. The exclusion criteria in the Victus trial were for patients less than 18 years of age who had organ dysfunction more than 24 hours, who had been hospitalized for more than 30 days, for those who had chronic respiratory or cardiovascular organ dysfunction, or a series of other contraindications to the use of the drugs or other reasons why treatment may not improve their risk of dying or other measures of outcomes. In the original Merrick trial, the treatment effect was 32%. And if that were the effects needed to be shown, the Victus trial would only need to enroll 72 patients. However, one of the things that we did was to consider smaller treatment effects, such as 20%, 10%, or even 5%, because those would still potentially be clinically relevant. For Victus, we calculated the sample sizes based initially on the uncontrolled single center report, but then we also considered a lower potential benefit of the drug combination and looked at smaller reductions in mortality. And we designed the study to have interim analyses, realizing that large effects would require smaller numbers of patients and that we may be able to stop the study early. So we had interim analyses that were conducted at 200, 300, and 400 patients, where if the probability that the drug was highly effective, we would have stopped enrolling and completed the analysis and terminated the trial earlier. Victus was a multi-center effort, enrolling subjects at 43 sites across North America using a combination of intensive care unit and emergency department investigators working together. 3,243 patients were screened for potential sepsis and organ dysfunction, and enrollment was completed ahead of schedule and now patient follow-up has completed out beyond 180 days. The Victus trial, led by Dr. Jonathan Savransky at Emory, Dr. Richard Rothman at Johns Hopkins, and Dr. David Wright at Emory, was recently published in JAMA. Victus randomized 501 critically ill sepsis patients to triple therapy with vitamin C, thiamine, and hydrocortisone, or matching placebos for a four-day treatment period. Open-label corticosteroids were permitted and were prescribed in about one-third of patients in both groups. The primary outcome for the Victus trial was ventilator and vasopressor-free days and were calculated as a median of 25 
versus 26 between the two groups with no statistical difference between them. There was a 30-day mortality of 22% versus 24% in the control group, also with no statistically significant difference. There were several secondary outcomes that were measured in the Victus trial, including mortality before ICU discharge, mortality at 180 days, change in SOFA score, length of ICU stay, coma and delirium free days, and kidney replacement therapy free days, of which none were statistically significant, and even the change in SOFA score was numerically identical. In conclusion, we know very clearly that vitamin C is depleted in patients with severe forms of critical illness, such as sepsis and multiple organ dysfunction. And individually, vitamin C, thiamine, and corticosteroids have been suggested to have benefit. There has been several recent trials which have produced conflicting results and no consistent benefit to the three drug combination. However, well-conducted larger trials have effectively excluded a large treatment effect that may have been possible with those three drugs. The combination, however, may be effective still in selected patients and is also being studied in severe and critical forms of COVID-19. Thank you for your contributions to the Society of Critical Care Medicine. The year 2021 is our 50th anniversary. And although we have not been able to meet in person since 2020, I hope to see many of you in person at our next annual SCCM Congress in Puerto Rico in February 2022. Thank you for your attention and for the most honorable invitation to speak at your meeting.